Young men at Grace and Hope Churches, I thought this was really interesting. I thought this would resonate with you, Jeff, because I've heard you say these things before. This is almost paraphrasing you. These young men are looking for leadership. They're hey, looking hey, for- hey, 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 wait a minute. This is a quote. I'm supposed to read these. Oh. Okay. Nice. Whoa. I, thought, I don't want to jump in here, but I, I have a, one job. I thought we had a technical glitch. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. you got to be kidding me. I have one job. That I, was a technical right. glitch. I forgot. He gets paid by the line. Okay. So okay. We'll, edit, we'll, we'll edit, edit that, that out. out. You start over. Can right, you start that sentence over again? Okay. The young men at Grace and Hope Churches are looking for leadership. They're looking for clarity. They're looking for meaning. He added, <laughs> There are guys that are just hungry. Next slide. Oh, oh. So it, it mentions this young man, uh, Kitron Ferrier. He's a senior at Baylor University. Sounds in Waco. like a name I made up. Well, he, he sounds like he's going to be a professional football player. Kitron Ferrier. Um, <laughs> Down at the 10-yard line. What position? <clears throat> left out. Um, <laughs> from which Grace Church drives a, a, a sizable portion of their young attendees. So a lot of Baylor uh, students go to Grace Church. Um, following Jesus is difficult, Mr. Ferrier said. It's about denying yourself and denying the lust of the flesh, he said. <laughs> Young flesh. men are attracted <laughs> to harder truths, Mr. Ferrier said. It's Sometimes, hard. he added, he wants to hear messages with a little wrath of God in them. Oh my God, now I got beef. So I thought this was interesting. The line that he gave there, young men are attracted to harder truths. We don't have Mr. Ferrier in the room. I could see if we could get a hold of him for next week. What are harder truths? Yeah, what does that mm-hmm. what is what does that mean to you when Don't you Don't ask that? that pastor about those fifteen seconds. Oh, oh what? what? <laughs> Yikes. Tonight's episode brought if, to you by E D. If you were to ment- <laughs> if you were to venture a guess on what he's Hymns. what he's uh referring to, what would you what would you say? By which Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so distracted by Jeff's uh, truths. Men are tra- men voice. are more attracted to harder truths. Manly voice. Sorry about that. I think the in the Bible when it talks about iron sharpening iron, that's probably a good universal truth about and and like you when you work out, it hurts. It's hard. It's hard to know how much biceps, <laughs> but it through that pain you grow. Literally, your muscles grow, and spiritually, emotionally, um. Intellectually, confession, challenging yourself. I think confession. I think accountability, like those kinds of things. Uh, Knowing there's something more for you. If you're just if you're wandering in the wilderness, you need some structure to build a life upon. And so, what he's referencing is if you go to a lot of these churches, especially the ones that preach a little bit of wrath and judgment, it's like you know the ins and the outs. You know the boxes. It's clean. It's 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 safe and you can build a community and you, you have people there that think the way you do and that are drawn to the same thing. Jeff, pull up that slide again there. And the section that he says right here in the middle where it's about denying yourself, denying the lust uh, of the flesh. I, I think that's a piece of what he's describing as these harder truths, which is, hey, there's there's part. It's of, a little too hard. Uh, there's part <laughs> of. you. <laughs> It's impossible, <laughs> but there's a des- there's a desire that men want want to overcome, want to like kind of follow the the straight and narrow. There, there's a version of the church morning that says it's all about grace and Jesus just meeting you where you're at, and uh, and don't worry as much about changing from who you are into being more and better, um, and and being the better version. Of, of the person that Jesus wants you to be. There, there's a version the of soft, that. The softest version of a sort of a prosperity-ish gospel would fall into that. Yeah, the most seeker-friendly of seeker-friendly churches, like seeking not to offend. Mm. And what I think he's saying here is like, young men are attracted to, and I think Jordan Peterson is is an example of this as well, where he's calling them into responsibility and maturity. Hey, you need to be better than you are today today tomorrow you need to be better than that because if you're if you're a young dude and this is not a joke but there's no joke if you're a young guy like him and i'm not talking about him specifically and you don't have a community you don't have your people and you're just on your phone all the time like and you've masturbated three times 
during the day and it's like is this is this life and so the the lustful part or the um denying the the flesh or whatever that quote was i think it's a large part of it because it's when you're young and your testosterone is firing and you don't have a community you don't have a maybe you don't have a job you're lost there's a lack it's of like, purpose hey i can yes I, I can look i can look at my screen and find some version of love right temporarily sure um, 15 seconds according to Steve Lawson and but then eventually that just feels soul sucking and soulless and it's like is it this is all there is to life it's is this- directionless and I think that's I think part of yeah. what pe- men coming back young men coming back into the church is a part of that they're searching for a purpose yeah there's something greater than than me in this world and and so they they are really searching at that age bracket and I, I think that's the swing. And whereas women, and um, I was looking up uh, some of the, um, where you got your article from, that they're, the people who created that, one of them was, he started the Pew Research. And mm. he was, they did uh, a big survey on, on women and men leaving um kind of conservative conservatism and uh, a lot of women going to the liberal side politically. But with, if you look at the two articles, they, they almost are right in line. Mm. Women are moving out of the church and going liberal and conservative is thought of as a, a Republican um, Christian, Catholic, Judeo Christian um, kind of, that's the side you wouldn't be a, you wouldn't be ultra liberal uh woman and be a devout christian in general i mean there are but you're not going to have a, a a side so i think the the like 25 30 year old woman has left the church that went in the liberal way and in uh political beliefs and ideologies and also they're like i'm going away from the church um, because, you know, you know, my beliefs don't line up with that. And it went from like 16% to 30% to now like 50% of younger women lib- turned liberal over the last 20 years. It's ap- hap- started happening mm-hmm. right around the end of Barack Obama's first term. And it just, it just goes downward. Mm-hmm. And then as Trump comes back Thanks, in, Obama. But w- as, as Trump comes back in, the people start coming back to church. There's this small increase from women and then the pandemic hits and then it's just a landslide yeah. down. All right, let's go to the next one. Um, There's so many genuinely good guys that are just literally always here for you. <laughs> said Andrew Parks. Was I just, too soon on that? Just voice feels like he's <laughs> shitting on my article. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's just changing his voice slightly for every quote, which I appreciate. Yeah. Okay, okay, said Andrew Parks, who he, has he, attended Grace for several years. Andrew would like to get married and have children someday. First, he wants to get a job where he earns enough to support a family. I want to be the sole provider if that's what she wants. Said. But what? but has no problem with his wife working outside the home. That's, Wait, that's not a quote. That's not a quote. You it's messed highlighted. Up. That was a Start te- over. That was a test. And you failed. <laughs> I failed. I'm so out. You are fired. You are fired. You just out. got fired. All no right. more reading. So I think what you're seeing here is like the, what you described, the increase in traditional values being a being uh, seen a resurgence within these young men. And, um, and they're trying to find other women or they're trying to find women who share those traditional values as well and, and care about that. All right, let's go to the next one. So this part is something that when I had uh, uh, Lindsay, my, my wife read the article as well, and she mentioned this, this piece of it too. So um, you don't have to quote this one. It's in a lady voice, Jeff. So don't worry. I can do it. Zach, let's why, why let's get Jeff that? fired actually. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's okay. I prefer that you didn't. <laughs> So yeah, but uh, one I, of the, I caught that Jeff. I heard that <laughs> one of the professors <laughs> at tried. Baylor University had mentioned that um, that the complementarian turn within some of these churches has reduced the vi- visibility of women in the church, 
Um, by the way, complimentarian is not saying um, that we're <laughs> saying how nice com- they look. Good job. You look really nice today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's not compliments. Complimentarian yin and yang. effectively is saying that um, that women cannot be in positions of leadership within the church. Know and, your roles. And so I, I think it does fuel what you've been describing, which is if, if that, if there's an increase or aware, at least awareness of it, that um, that complementarianism exists within the church uh, from that generation that that is turning women off. They're they're pulling away from from the churches, and so. But this is what's crazy. Look at this next line, right? So that's um, opening more official roles to women, though may not necessarily win them back. Many of the largest liberal denominations that ordain women are in steep decline. I wonder what's going on with that. It's basically saying these that you have women who are leaving seems normal to me leaving churches to go to these liberal denominations theoretically because they're non complementarian and they're giving leadership positions to women. However, those churches are declining steeply because when they have one argument, all the friendships end and they disappear. Oh what, my gosh! What would be <laughs> there's there is so truth to just, that? I Jeff have a Pearson <laughs> at Bros Bibles Beer. No, no, hold on. No, got, this got, is our podcast. I got a question. You don't have to say that. And what do you mean? We always say that. We say that <laughs> every single episode. Well, don't say it anymore. Anytime I, will so, I request it. that you don't say it. Any, hey, request so, the night. So we'll just submit it to corporate and <laughs> wait for their response. Um, so Jeff, if you were to steel man that. Like, what's the best? What's what's the most charitable reason for that happening, as opposed to whatever what you just w- said? Women leaving and going. Yeah, there uh, are there possibly other reasons besides what you just said that that might be happening. I, I mean, I I know of a few people that I could see or maybe have left the church and gone somewhere else, and then like ah, it doesn't work. And I literally say it's because they couldn't find friendships. Um. That's that, a, that's a big one. That's I mean that would be number one. I mean women are built on on friendships and being completely connected. If they're not connected, peace out. Whereas, what do friendships have to do with leadership positions, though? So women leaving a church where they don't allow that, going to a church where they do, yeah, it, it's the same thing. Doesn't matter if it's a woman in leadership if she doesn't have connection with her congregation, the people that are there then she's going to leave. It's going to fall apart. And plus, uh, you can only be at a church so long where you're listening to a woman preach on the Bible where you're like, I need a man's touch here. How long have you gone to a church where a woman has been preaching before you required a man's touch? (laughs) Um, (laughs) When I'm talking about the women that go to these churches... Exactly when did you need the man to touch you? <laughs> point to me, to point on me, point on touch Zach. me where... Is touch, this where we talk about our 15 seconds touch, out of ministry? Touch Zach, where you where would you like were to hurt. be... Where you were touch touched. the doll. Touch the... Point to... <laughs> this is I think, really going downhill. I think part of it, it is security... How about how about I give you an example so we don't have to guess what other people might be thinking? We left a church that was heavily complementarian. It was not the only reason. There were other reasons why we left that church, but there was a statement. We will never have a woman in leadership at our church. Mm-hmm. And for our family, we went, boy, that laying down that hard stance um, amongst some other data points for us was like, maybe this isn't the place for us. Why? Uh, because I, why would that, I believe that women can have great things to offer in positions of leadership. I don't, I don't believe it has to be a binary in and out of the church. Sure. Both. I believe it's, I believe it's totally possible. I believe it does happen. And I, I think there's a lot going on here. Um, some of it is biological. I think increased testosterone, like people that nat- naturally like take control or are a little bit more aggressive are more more leadership oriented in just the classical way. Um, 
just the traditional way. And so in general, women may not be prone to want that position. Yeah. But not all women are like that. So there are some women that have, w- whether it's high tes- higher testosterone on the spectrum of female or not, whatever the reason, I think there will be, you could, there's, so if, to disagree with some of the left people that think that we can have equity in all things, it just, it, it never works that way. There will be women that can have leader, that have leadership skills. And I don't, think society should stifle that necessarily and um but in general men are going to be driven towards more of those roles like why do no women want to become garbage disposal people or people that take out the trash or whatever there's plenty of industries that are dominated by men nobody's going to want to be their friend where it's <laughs> because of the smell <laughs> you're probably right like you're a garbage <laughs> man. hey man let's watch the football game that's a man thing but some of this stuff is you go to a church that has women in leadership. Yeah. And have gone to a church that has women in leadership. I love listening to the women sing. <laughs> Just not when they talk. And I, prefer, where you're at. I prefer listening to a man lead at the pulpit. And that that's fine. But but what I was thinking about we can get back to that. But this why these churches aren't growing or whatever. I, there's a very there's safety in clean lines who's in who's out we know where we stand on every issue and so naturally more conservative churches grow better than more liberal churches because there's clean delineations the the liberal person that leaves a conservative church maybe they'll check out a few liberal churches but they're already burnt out on church in general. And it's like, yeah, maybe I'll check this place out. That's more accepting. It's, it's not hard to see that they might leave easier and just like check out of church altogether. If you've been burnt out by a uh, conservative churches, which I think a large percentage of these women leaving uh, the conservative church, it's going to be the case. Mm. So I mean, it's the case with me, with me in my de- deconstruction. I'm not a woman. Even though you made that joke, I can do I can do a, a great <laughs> female impression, um, but but we can agree that when there are clear lines, when there's a there's a box that this our church fits in this box, like this is the Bible, this is there is no getting out of this. It's like this is black and white. People, there's much more success within churches, Catholic Church, Christian Church. Um, within many religions in general, if you if you if you're outside of that and you're just like anything goes, you have less success because it's it's kind of an open open Pe- people palm don't thing. know because in an anything goes environment, each person is coming with their thing is the most important, but they're all going to be more different, and so. It, it it's like okay anything goes but that's not my thing and so it, you're more prone to less growth and plus there really is a fight or flight thing going on where just, it, right now it is so crazy and confusing in the world we are in the weirdest timeline so, in I so many ways that. and so people are drawn towards polarization finding, finding a place where they know what is right and what is wrong what's up and what's down there's no questions yeah and it's self-selecting. Te- technology has is wired to drive us towards polar feelings on things. Nothing in between. Black or white, A or B, red or blue. Those are your options. You don't have any subtlety. There's no nuance. Now, we go to a church that has was founded on the idea of being uh, of centered set theology, mm-hmm. which is to say we're not drawing these hard borders. We're drawing the center of it, which is to say we follow Jesus and we recognize that that's the commonality that we want to draw everybody to. We don't we don't pretend to think that we're going to get everybody else in the room to align on all of these other topics. There's no way. And by the way, those hard border um what's it called uh bounded 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 set theology mm-hmm. it I would be willing to bet if if everyone if we could somehow get into people's brains and and have direct knowledge of what they thought and where they landed on all these topics 
they would realize that the room is way more split than people may verbalize. Uh, that's my that's my theory. Because Which, it's not, it wouldn't be a safe place necessarily for somebody that maybe is outside the box on a couple of things to speak up because they'd be like, well, you can't check our theological boxes, so you have to and leave. And so we recognize that our at our church that puts us in a tough spot. Like you were you were saying, I think it's I think it is easier for some churches to grow when they draw these hard lines because I think it it can feel safer to somebody who's trying to figure out where they should go. So instead of offering but, some questions, you're only offering answers. And, and so that, that can be like, great, I don't have to think about this anymore. You, I was looking for X, you do X, you believe X, great. But I love the fact that somebody like Jeff is at a church and there are plenty of people there that, that lean towards that angle of like, yeah, I don't prefer a woman because I'm not sure where I stand on that or I, I don't stand, I'm not in that spot theologically, but you still believe in the, the heart of the community at, at large and so you're there and there's plenty of people that are you know, further left than I am theologically and I'm, these categories are lame, but they, they matter sure. for a certain degree. But So I'm left to, of you theologically but there's people there at church that are probably further than me, but we're at this watering hole together because we, you can't, people, right. people don't change by saying, Hey, this is the right answer. You need to change. That's not how people change. People need an opportunity to grow and learn from each other. And that's why the centered set thing is, that's why I'm still at church. Because if, if it wasn't like that, I'd, I'm, he gone. And I don't know if I would go church hunting for well, a long I, time. I guess the idea of, uh, what you said about what well, we learn from each other. It's like, well, we're supposed to be learning from the Bible and Jesus. And so those conversations of learning from each other better be from that than elsewhere. And, and so that's why people have come to our church and left and gone somewhere else where they find like, wait, you don't believe in this and this and this. Uh, yeah, I'm out of here. Cause that's a little wishy washy for me. And so, Good. You know, it's, it's, and I, sometimes I think about it, what's our rest or home for, for the, the wanderer, rest for the, for the weary, yeah, home for restoration the wanderer, of all things. Yeah. Home for the wanderer, rest for the weary. It's like maybe people that were all at these other churches, they're just like, ah, it's just maybe too difficult to do this. Or I got just worn out or I got burned or, you know, I kind of, you know, had yeah. other thoughts. And so now, you know, I need someone to, somewhere to rest and just be accepted. And so that's, that's what our church is. In many regards. I think there's some of that. I think there's definitely lots of people who've come here because they've they've been burned out by other churches. Sure. For sure. There are. And they've, definitely. They've felt like uh, church became a job mm. for them. And religion became oppressive and only gave them negative feelings about themselves and their lives. 